final pick setting up for Team Spirit. They got the – again, we're, we're assuming this is going to be a sports fan, and, yeah, you would definitely figure that with the way things are shaping up here. Uh, yeah, I don't think – carrying a carry spending to a Wyvern is not the best idea. Yeah. I think they have, like, a group of four heroes right now for Team Spirit. They need, like, a hero that plays alone, I think, is what they need right now. Just anything that – Unless they want the Beastmaster to play alone, but I would much rather have like an independent type carry hero here that just allows Team Spirit to group up as four while uh, this other hero just takes all the like separate farm because they have lo low catch on elements. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that as fourth pick, but just as good as the fifth pick. Oh, you meant, yeah, you mentioned this earlier on, and it kind of rounds out their draft pretty nicely here. It gives them kind of a good mix of where they can get some physical damage, but also against the Cold Embrace, you know, he's got his nukes. He can go for an Ethereal Blade. He can uh, still do damage and be effective against some of this damage mitigation. And you want your four heroes to be running around to, like, be making space for something, you know, to have purpose of the fact that they're running around taking objectives, and Morphling will make use of that perfectly. Okay. Hmm. I, does Monkey go mid against Husker? I feel like that's not a lane. With ganks, role. it's okay. So I think based on what I'm seeing, they might do like an aggro tri lane just to get the Wyvern freed up in order to like roam on mid. Uh, that like I, I feel like Monkey King against Huskar in a vacuum is bad, but if you have roaming potential, then it's good. So I, I, I'd like to see how they play it out. I feel like it's a mistake if they just let it be a strict 1v1. They're also running a uh, core dazzle, so I don't know if you want dazzle in the one v one the side lane because Mitch oh, is normally their three. Runs the the support. Okay, then I don't know. I, I feel like if you're not ganking for the monkey king, you're doing something wrong here in this matchup. So maybe they maybe they want to put dazzle mid or something. I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, we'll we'll just kind of have to see how they decide to play it out. I feel like on paper I, I like Team Spirit's draft a lot more. Gods, what about you? As far as uh, I. Oh, I'm a big I'm a big believer in this support Sven in particular. I think even so in the position role, just because um, he's got two amazing spells, the Stormhammer and the, the Warcry particularly. Um, I don't think you need items on, on Sven when you're playing him as a support. So uh, he's a great five position right now. Uh, lanes well with the Morphling. I feel like there's good kill potential there. He can kind of secure that lane pretty well. So uh, I would lean towards Team Spirit here. All right, take a look at the odds. One of our more even matchups here, as again, kind of expected. Elements Pro Gaming, uh, the underdogs technically, but if you like those odds yourself, you can play some bets on them. You head over to es.bet and do so. You can take advantage of the insurance as well here for the We Play Winter Madness event in the next four days. We've got this playoff action. You can always head over and put those bets in. So, what about, uh, or I guess BSJ, you already mentioned that. So, all right, we got game number one of this best of three that's uh, upon us here. Between these two teams, so the draft, we, we get a Huskar game once again. You're confident in, in the Huskar pick and what it can do again. Well, how they're going to lane, though, it continues to be the, the interesting question from Elements Pro Gaming, specifically with Dazzle being played by Mitch, who is a core player. Are they going to swap things up, or will he be in that off lane and go from there? Forward. I do feel like Elements have some very strong laning heroes. Like, all their cores are generally considered to be lane winners. Like, you pick Troll to have a strong lane stage, Monkey King, similar thing. Uh, you've got Dazzle Core. Like, they, they could just win multiple lanes if they get the right matchups. I, I will say, from personal experience of playing the matchup, and so I'm either missing something or I have the right idea here. I've played both sides of it. I think Morphling is <laughs> one of the best cores against Dazzle in the laning stage. Uh, it's like a hero with decent armor. And then um, it's hard for him to keep the poison touch on you. And also you have like a, a gap closing ability where once you get like level four, the dazzle, if he's if the if he's at threat of anything, will just die um, to you. So uh, I, I feel like I'm a little bit concerned if they put dazzle against Morphling with the Sven. I think that's like a strong lane. Um, and then you have the Huskar mid. So I feel like this game could snowball both ways really hard in the, in the laning stage, like one way or the other, depending on what lane setups. And like a, like this is a game where if one team makes like a couple crucial errors at level one or two, I think the game's actually just gonna, they're just gonna lose, like, because the, it'll snowball so quickly um, either way. Uh, and I, I, this is a game where I just feel like the momentum of Team Spirit is why I favored them. I just, if they get a slight start, like a decent one, there's just, I, I don't really see the comeback potential uh, for elements. So I, I, I think that this first minute's gonna decide a lot for us. This game. As that morphling player, is there something that Skidder you think is going to be looking for in terms of morphing into in these fights, or is it just going to be simply what's ever in front of him? 
I think Wyvern and Troll are, or, or Wyvern and Brew, excuse me, are both really good. Uh, you get the the Q from Wyvern, you can use it and then uh, turn back into Morphling with extended range. And then you can also use the Brewmaster Drunken Brawler and then turn back into Morphling. So you get like this the crit and the and the oh, evasion. So I think I think both those heroes are very nice to, to morph into as Morphling. Uh, most of all, I, they have like no stuns. They have, their only stun is Monkey King. So I, I feel like Morphling will sure. only die if he's isolated and like the last hero alive. So uh, this is a game where then it's really nice to play Morphling when you can run around on low HP and reactively use all of your abilities rather than having to uh, preemptively start morphing or you know play on edge because he's a hero that's very mechanically difficult so adding him being a threat of everything it adds a lot of difficulty to the hero i think the hero goes up or goes down in skill cap when it comes down to like you just don't you're not scared you're not scared of dying so i, I like i like morphling's game here like i would i would feel very comfortable playing morphling in a, in a game like this no bash on troll feels bad man yeah, I mean it, the 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 basher build can be pretty insane though. Troll like <laughs> because you can you can actually buy basher now means True. like your proc chance of getting locked down is pretty nuts. It's just like before the basher, heroes like uh, Huskar and Morphling are just way better against troll. So it, it kind of just it's weird how much something like that can change matchups between a hero just because it's like it seems like a small change, but. Uh, there's so many matchups that are like way better for him now against heroes that are more mobile because you have like a higher chance to net them and then they can't use their mobility spells. But then there's heroes that can defend themselves through net and that makes them way better. Yeah. Join the nice cinematic view that we got going on as we are in a pause, of course, to kick things off here. So hopefully get that taken care of shortly. And I don't know where we're watching now. <laughs> I don't know. The stream, love pauses. The stream occasionally uh, likes to show some funny things. All right. Are you uh, are you one that likes to use a new terrains BSG or you keep it de default? I almost always keep it default. Uh, for whatever reason, I get distracted very easily by, by stuff I'm not used to seeing. So, like, whenever I've tried random terrains, I'll just... There's just like that one or two moments in the game where I'll like look at the terrain and then I just die or something. So I, I generally have leaned away from using the cosmetics, not because they don't look good. It just personally distracts me. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know, Gabe, and I'm not trying to insult your your cosmetics. Are, are you not watching the stream, BSJ? I am watching the stream. It's just that I, I'm not sure. Am I seeing the same thing you're seeing <laughs> on on the delay? <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing them, you know, have all this Christmas decorations, and I feel like if I was one of these guys, I'd be the one with the Santa sweater for sure. Wait, are you live on the stream? No, I, uh, I am I able say. to see the stream live? Yeah, so you're supposed to, yeah, the, the stream, the, the link that we have for you. You're supposed oh. to go to that and then click live if you're not live. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. And there should be something interesting that shows up when <laughs> you do that. I will find that link now. Because we are in a pause, and this is where we're watching. Let's take a look at the actual game. Do we have any information? What's going on? Um, nope, just uh, no DCs or anything. So, not too sure. What we're waiting on here, but we can enjoy this. Uh, whatever's going on stream in the meantime. Okay, now I see what. You're talking. <laughs> now, you, now you see what I was reacting to. Uh, this is a tribute to me, I guess. The bananas. <laughs> kind of doesn't work, yeah. Uh, no, I. Uh, uh, just keeps going, man. <laughs> just keeps going. This is quality content, if you ask me. That's this event. This is what the viewers are here for. Who cares about Dota? Let's just watch a gorilla man slam some bananas. What is that? A nail? <laughs> It looks wow. like it. It's like the back end of a nail, yeah. Just don't even understand. This is definitely what I imagine my Friday nights looking like <laughs> on a good on a good week. You're a fan of bananas, I assume. Good. Uh... Oh, I mean, yeah, I do love bananas. They're they're just a all around good fruit. You know, potassium, healthy. What is the history of the name? I don't think I actually know. Oh yeah, I just one day one of my. Uh, teammates in football realized that Canavan rhymed with Banana Man when I was eating a banana. 
And from then on, I got called Banana Man. And that's where it all started. It's always interesting hearing the origins. Yeah, usually names. pretty, usually like underwhelming compared to, <clears throat> yeah, you know, very th much. there's probably some crazy backstory. Nah, it was just something I came up with when I was 17. Pretty much. All right, I think we're good. Whew, we made it through that, whatever it was. We actually have a game I, now. I, I think we're, you know, now we're on to the boring part of the game here. Yeah, why are we even here? Let's just leave. Yeah, that was that was it. All right, EPG versus Team Spirit. Game one, again, officially of this best of three. Kick things off here. What's our final series again of the day? God, this new, this new mischief. I know you're a Monkey King player yourself. You like the, the new mischief and how you can even disjoint? Yeah, I mean, I think it adds a lot of uh, fun to the hero. I think a lot of people have complained about it a bit, but I think overall it's like a lot of heroes received a ton of buffs, so I think giving him a little bit of uh, – quality of or not like even quality of life like skill cap like uh Don't just the ability it's like a big laning thing it happens sometimes in the mid to late game but i think for me the most standout part is is the is like the laning stage where you can dodge like certain stuns or like you can dodge um in this game specifically i guess just sven stun um or morphling adaptive strike these type of things really add up if you if you dodge the usage of those abilities yeah battery is the start <laughs> See the Radiance contesting at the top somewhat. Brewmaster's going in there, but there's three heroes, so... Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to sneak in there. Swift Fanning at the bottom. Esther Duran, I believe he was able to pick that up first. So they're going to use Whirling Axes and slow him down with the Arctic Burn. Not going to be enough damage, though. He'll get away. And actually, it was picked up by Trolls. So never mind. Uh, they end up getting three for one in favor of Elements Pro Gaming. As a result, that... So yeah, good start for them. They uh, are putting the Dazzle against the Morphling, so I, I will definitely keep an eye on this lane matchup. Uh, looks pretty rough for them so far because they're getting tri -laned. and this is really important to establish this lead. We saw it uh, last series with the Morphling. Level 1, if he gets that good start, um, the hero just makes so much use of getting past the early levels. His level 3 is like so powerful with the Morph, so really doing a good job of that. And, and this is something that most teams will do, is they'll just start cutting the creep wave with the support. Well, that's first like blood. Fight anymore. Dazzle goes down at the top lane, so taking advantage of that tri lane start at least for Team Spirit. Again, reiterate, we're seeing so much of that in this patch. So well played there as Estadro Rotten's doing a pull at the bottom. Wyvern's doing as much as he can to prevent this, but not going to be enough. He pops the salve and he'll be fine as we once again have a pause here, unfortunately. Dazzle D seed. So the Monkey King versus the Huskar in the mid lane. W were you concerned about that, or is it you think Monkey King can do just fine? Yeah, I think uh, if Monkey King's left alone, it's it gets rough as the as the levels go up. But uh, the early levels, he should be fine, and it looks like that's the case. He's doing well in CS so far. Uh, it just comes down to like if Huskar gets level four or five ish, then the it almost becomes impossible to sustain the harass. And Monkey King's not really a hero that can afford to like leave his lane super early on. He, he kind of wants to sit in lane denying creeps and like relying on his passive to win trades. And so I would expect in the mid game that uh, they would need to gank for the Monkey King. But the problem is if you're like losing your other lanes, like they have started with the top lane, I think that bodes like it's a matchup in the mid lane that depends on how the other lanes go because both heroes are, are killable from ganks like on either side. Um, so it depends on like who's able to help their mid laner more and um, like it just looks scary for them in the top lane already. They're gonna feed like they fed the one kill for first blood, and um, it doesn't like this lane just doesn't get any better for them. So I would expect it to kind of bleed into more kills. Speaking of more kills, LeBron Dota, the top lane as we come out of the pause. The Inkswell connects and no more attack from Viver gets the kill. Now they're going right for Mitch. This top lane is gonna get worse and worse here for EPG. Although Dazzle, he'll end up surviving, but taking plenty of damage. Gonna have to pop some more regen to get back up there, but yeah, clearly this tri lane's very effective. You have you Morphling just killing the creeps all the way behind his tower due to the pull. And he gets solo XP when this happens, so it's even better for Morphling because once he gets this solo XP, it'll free the supports up to leave and go wherever they want. We, and like you just see this powerful duo like we saw with the Lich Earthspear last series, and now I really like the Sven Gernstroke. It's a hero that relies on the, or the Sven benefits from the movement speed to close the gap, and then he gets a stun of his own, so the chain stun is just so much damage. Uh, both both stuns are incredible amounts of damage at low levels. Mm -hmm. Another kill on a Dazzle. Again, it's technically supposed to be 
uh, the core at that top lane. So clearly running into a bit of an issue up there. And if you're EPG, I mean, are you getting to a point almost where you kind of just stop sending them both to the top lane? You make rotations elsewhere because that's now three deaths already. I, I'm not sure how you recover from this personally. Like uh, Dazzle's, uh, I played this matchup from Dazzle's side. I died once to the Morphling, and then my game felt over. And that's like, <laughs> like it's just like you you can't walk up anymore. Once Morphling gets like level four or five, you just can't walk up to lane. Yeah. So it's they're kind of on a tipping, ticking time bomb. Um, they might end up having to make some lane swaps. Um, but that's not exactly something Troll wants to do. So they might just end up having to bite the bullet and accept what's happening in the top lane. Possibly try to help other lanes, like mid lane with the brew or something, maybe like right behind him. Oh, solo kill on mid, it looks like. Oh, going for it. Huskar. He is getting low, and there you go. Predicting the future. Oh, well, I thought I, if I'm watching the stream, I'm seeing the same thing you are. So I guess I'm still a couple seconds ahead of you guys. So I'll make sure I. Are you, are you on the stream now? Okay. Yeah, I am on the stream, so I'll make sure case, I'm yeah. I'm watching at the same time you are. Yeah. The last we... thing I want to do is look like a <laughs> future predictor here. Unfortunately, yeah, it does seem to get out of sync a couple of times, so maybe just a couple of seconds at least. Pause that bad oh. boy. Um, but yeah, you see our man, he goes down as far as denying himself. That was uh, that was on purpose, one of those situations, seeing that quite a bit, of course. So he's kind of done his job, free regen. It's back in, but yeah, a, a kill from Monkey King though in that middle lane on the Husker. That's that's, that's got to feel good. He mentioned as the level start adding up could get more difficult. So the fact that he has this great start is big. And mentioning maybe he's roamed to the mid lane, and sure enough, Sven, he's coming mid. As if they want to get this kill, you see the burning spears adding up. But Monkey King's just hugging the tower right now. Alright, man, he's wrapped all the way around. I don't know if he was. Sitting, I, I think he was though. In fact, it doesn't matter though. Stormhammer comes out. There's the inner fire pushback, and Poronesia will be fine. The Burning Spears, he pops a salve at the last second, too, just in case, and just enough to stay alive. RMN also getting low. Biver's now in trouble, too. Inkswell helping him get away from DNZ on the Wyvern, and it looks like it should be enough. So somehow nobody ends up dying there in that middle lane. And this is what naturally will happen because Morphling is level four to both heroes top being level two. You can just start invading the mid lane. And uh, overall, this has been, I think, benefits Team Spirit if nothing's happening. But it seems like uh, so far the gold lead is in favor of Elements. So that's a little bit surprising to me. I guess it's all in the Troll Warlord bottom. We haven't really seen much of that lane. Uh, but I did mention it. It's a winning lane for Troll. They gave it a good start, and I guess what's happening top is also happening bottom. It's actually 29 to four in terms of the CS bottom. So Beastmaster, oh very momentum-based hero, uh, and he's clearly not getting any of it. So this is kind of one of those games where it feels like like three years ago or something, where both off laners are just completely sacked, and both safe laners are free farming. The question is, who's that going to benefit more? He mentioned Troll's one that really takes over that early mid-game stage, especially with the changes of anything, so uh, you'd figure that's going to favor EPG quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like this could favor either team. We're going to kind of have to find out, like, it, it, it'll come down to, like, one or two fights around 10, 15 minutes that will just decide this game, I think, because both teams are having enough heroes getting enough of a start, but they're both having, like, certain heroes with really weak starts, so you're gonna it's going to come down to, like, whatever snowballing hero gets that extra little bit of them. Monkey King, middle lane. They try to set up a gank on him. Biver's going to end up dying for this, most likely. The tower, no, he barely stays alive, but <laughs> Monkey King will come in and say, thank you very much. Yeah, he swallowed his illusion, kill. and then the illusion died. So he just doesn't do anything. Oh, my. Oh, Monkey King loves that one. Again, a three-kill streak stopper as well. So bounty gold coming out for it. Obviously continuing to have a very good start here. As I keep looking back at the CS, though, man. Trolls 36 and 23. The CS top lane, LeBron, Warcry activated. They're just going to simply run at him, and not much more you can do. Obviously, Dazzle can only do so much with the seal. Not going to save him, though. They're going to wrap around again. In fact, I was going to say Dazzle has to be careful as well. He's a good distance away, at least, and so he will survive. But back to this top lane, continuing to be difficult. But I'm excited to see where – what is Troll going to build, by the way? We I don't know if we've clicked on it yet recently, but – what would you expect to see? Uh, you can either see, sometimes they'll go the Vlads, but generally if they, like, with or without the Vlads, they'll have, like, a Yash, a Bash, or BKB, and, like, a general, and eventually a Blink. That's what I end up seeing, Basher being very crucial. OK. 
uh, to the neutral. Uh, it's just a matter of like if building the Vlads is if like somebody else on his team is going to build one. If nobody else builds one, general you like you always need the life steal on Trolley. Just benefits so much from it. It lets you be able to Roche. Yeah. Um, and Roche is a huge threat this game. Uh, Radiant has Troll and Dire has Huskar, so definitely an eye. Like probably one of the early to mid game fights, like most important fight of the game, will happen at the Roche pit. <laughs> this top lane just doesn't stop, man. Out comes the Shallow Grave. Armin does go down to the Poison Touch. Skitter wants this kill. The Shallow Grave works off. The heal bomb comes out, though, and Skitter gets low, but not low enough. That's Morphling for you. Just when you think you have a chance. So they finally kill Dazzle. And then again, we already have a 5-5 to five hero kill game as we're basically about seven and a half minutes in or so at this point. But uh, you mentioned, obviously, Vlad's, you know, like a Brewmaster could definitely go Vlad's, although he has a support role this game, but still. Maybe try to manage it on him, but Troll currently doesn't have anything queued up. Has the power treads to go with the double wraith band, so keep an eye on Swift ending. I, I like this idea from Elements. Like earlier, I liked that uh, Team Spirit was causing havoc in the mid lane just because top lane was like free farming Morphling, and like all. Well, meanwhile, like all this stuff going on top, like Troll's just dominating bottom, getting all these solo levels and uh, winning the lane alone. So all this brawling is really like comes down to who else is benefiting in the other lanes right now. And, you know, another kill goes down in the mid lane. These are just all lanes where one hero, like, passively dominates. So the only option both teams have is to kind of just constantly run around and not allow that to continue happening. So I'd eventually like to see probably a gank on Troll. He's just much more fragile than the the Morphling. Uh, I don't. I, I feel like both these carries for the time being, though, are pretty much invincible. So a lot of, like, whatever lane they go to, like, that lane will win. Like, if they try to invade the Morphling, the Morphling's lane will win. If they try to invade the Troll. So this is, like, an awkward game. Like, it's something you don't see too often. Just, like, absolutely sacrifice, absolute free farm. Just results in, like, having to just do random crap. <laughs> this is pretty much what I say. Well, that random crap, middle lane. And Brewmaster spots the supports that were here. TP in as well from DNZ. So then it's a three versus three. LeBron Dota to the one. He's one taking push damage. The Storm Hammer hits both, including Monkey King. He has to man up. Not going to be enough, though. Mischief doesn't save him. But guess who's here? It's Troll. He pops his ultimate. He gets one. He's going to get a second. Double kill in the end for Swift Ending. So cleanup crew with the Troll Warlord in that middle lane. Super important rotation. Like, both carries being so strong. This is Troll. Like, his, his mid game's insane nowadays. He's probably the most powerful mid game carry, if, if, if you ask my opinion. And so when he gets this early lead, it's not enough for him to just be content farming. He has to respond to the rest of his team getting punished. And that's like a perfect example of him doing the right thing there. Yeah. He has the Yasha queued up, so he will be going for that. Skipping the Vlads, looks like somebody else will be building it. That's pretty much the only decision you really have on Troll. I think you can't really go these like slow Battle Fury type items, but now they're going to do exactly what I hope they would do, where they're invading the Troll since he has no ultimate to yep. protect himself with, and there you go. Huge kill. Out. Dazzle was nearby, but couldn't do enough, and he too is going to go down, so a double kill for Skitter. Yeah, talk about a great response from Team Spirit. It's going to be a triple kill in the end for Morphling, so Morphling's like anything you can do, I can do better. And they're going to push the bottom tower on top of that. Yeah, I love the way Team Spirit like thought about that. I mentioned that I wanted them to gank the, the troll at some point, and he's really tough to bring down when he has his ultimate. But uh, the second they realized he used his ultimate to TP, or, like on mid lane, and they saw him walking back bottom, they knew that was immediately their time to punish. Whenever you know you need to kill a hero, you just have to recognize the point in the game, whether it's like items, levels, ability cooldowns, where they're fragile. And that, they did a really good job, like instant punish on that. So, And now they might even threaten this tier two. In the bottom one. Saw the Vlads pick up on Beastmaster on the Dire side, and they're using that to push with him. And I'm not sure if the R is maxed out or not. Probably the Call of the Wild, but R is at least level two, I'm sure. He got Skidder. They may need to help at the back lines. DNC with the Winter's Curse on RMN as they dove really deep, but just more of a we're going to stay alive Winter's Curse. However, this bottom tier two, it's going to die. That's Beastmaster for you. Yeah. Just a little bit of momentum. Vlads pick up, like you said, just that Radiance aura attack speed damage. Just shreds buildings. Well, Troll does that too. <laughs> that fervor stacked yeah. up. Absolutely, and they're doing the right thing by trading here. I don't think you want to contest into Beastmaster. Uh, this stage in Mid lane Monkey King. Stun onto him. Inkswell. It is enough damage. So nine credit for the kill, and he's going to push the mid tier one now himself. So, oh, just had a refresh there. Okay, we're good. Mid tier one goes down though, in favor of Team Spirit. So yeah, a lot of a lot of just tower exchanging going on here between the teams, and 
Overall, 3,000 net worth lead, though, for Team Spirit with Morphling, of course, leading the way. They have that backup, though, with Huskar. So that, that, to me, is what's standing out the most right now and why Team Spirit seems like the favorite team here. Yeah, it's just I think they can shift their control to the top half of the map, which means they'll be worried about Roche. Looks like they like are already concerned about that, and there's a big fight brawl like brewing up on the on the Roche pit, and that Huskar is gonna go down. Am I predicting the future again? No, you're or, actually you're right on point okay. with me. So cool. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> making sure I'm not predicting the future again. We have the winner's curse, and yeah. that, that's the that's why you pick the winner's or the wyvern against the beastmaster because you give all your allies the, the damage auras, the average, the attack speeds, the damage, and they kill you even faster or kill their other allies even faster. So that's why the wyverns generally picked up against beastmaster. Uh, God's mentioned, I believe, in the draft, the physical damage. Might have been you. I don't want to take away credit. I no, it wasn't me. But... Definitely wasn't me. Uh, uh, okay, you know. Well, the troll has the basher queued up, which I think is absolutely correct. Uh, just so powerful for the hero. That's yeah. still so weird seeing that basher on yeah. troll, but makes sense. The, the thing about this Monkey King pick is he's just so fragile in the mid game, and against heroes like Beastmaster, you just get punished, and that's why I didn't really love the pick last. Uh, it just You're going to be forced to fight because you're against like a Huskar Beastmaster lineup. And Monkey King, I just don't think thrives in these type of scenarios. So when I said there was going to be a fight at Roche, looks like it's just going to be a quick pick off into the Roche pit. And that's super important who takes this Roche. Such a momentum based game. Huskar, probably one of the best Aegis carriers in the entire game. I was going to say, so you do give it to Huskar and sure enough, yeah. Yeah, it's just so. he's your building hitter. It lets him like play aggressively with low health. So not only is he able to play aggressively but you also since you like are fine playing on low health you also damn like output way more damage it's just such a nice like just such a nice uh comfort zone like you just have that room for error which allows you to just kind of go ham yeah especially since he doesn't have that the backup which a lot of a lot of time nowadays we, we don't really see that backup support you don't need it with a huskar but yeah they don't have the dazzle the oracle the io whatever um so having that age is that much more comfortable now Exactly. It lets him like it just lets his team make moves like this where he can be alone because they're not scared of him dying. They don't have to like actually protect him as he hits buildings. But looks like the turner. Yeah, they're going for it at least. There's that curse again. Esther Doran taking some damage only from the Sven though, not the most. They do kill Grimstark off to the left, however, and Beastmaster, well, uh, that Warcry saving him for the time being, but they want him for sure over the Sven. They're going to lift Sven in the air. God, it's taking so long to kill this Beastmaster. That Vlad's helping. It is not enough, though. Double kill. Sven does get away, though. Although LeBron is still chasing. He, he's able to lift the Sven right before he came back together, but he is still too far away. Problem is you want the troll to be the one playing alone on the map because the troll just kills buildings very quickly. But instead, because Monkey King's had such a slow start, he's the one having to play alone, kind of play catch up. And while all this fight's going on, so much the, the Monkey King's just playing catch up. There's nothing, there's no objectives being taken. There's like, you're fighting on your own side of the map. So yeah, you get like one or two kills, but it doesn't really show any difference in the net worth and any kill that Dyer gets is gonna turn into objectives. And that's what you're seeing right now. Troll getting gone on the Burning Spears will probably take him down after his ulti oh, expires. Yeah, I was gonna say he has the ulti, so it's gonna turn and pop the Aegis. But as you mentioned, after the fact, although Shallow Grave will prevent him from time for the time being. Nine coming back up with the Aegis. Can they actually kill Troll? Not just yet. The Burning Spears have worn off. He's staying alive and he gets away. However, now DNZ in trouble. Gold Embrace, no, nothing's gonna save him there. Too much damage. So they pop the Aegis. All he loses is the Wyvern so far. Morphling is going pretty deep. Not sure. Camera, let's go to the south. Trying to get a kill on Brewmaster, it looks like. Still not enough, so ultimately coming back with the team. I, I think I like EPG right there as far as what they're able to accomplish, at least. Yeah, I mean, you do have to get rid of the Aegis, but it's kind of like uh, I like it because it's probably your best-case scenario situation, but it's not exactly good because you're still losing two towers for this, and despite Huskar losing the Aegis, like... He's working on his next item, which is the most important item of the game for him. It's, it, I, I, I would say it either has to be a Force Staff or a Halberd. Um, it's just in order to create space between you and the troll, because the way he dies is going to be troll um, wailing on him. So he just has to uh, delay that aspect. Uh, and so he looks like he's choosing Hurricane Pike over the over the Halberd. But oh, our man. Supports both go down. Slow down, and yeah, both supports do go down. You mentioned uh, Hurricane Pike on Huskar. But, uh, who was going the pike? Sorry. 
Oh uh, yeah, on the husk guard. Oh, okay. It's just like it's just an item that uh, allows him to create space between himself and the troll, so that the troll can't just ulti and hit him for all of his da all of his health, because that's how he's gonna die in this game. Yeah. As Huskar, you pretty much have to ask yourself, how am I gonna die this game, and then itemize in order to not die, because you out you output so much damage just by being alive. Yeah, normally you figure being susceptible to magic damage now, like that might be, you know, getting a BKB, but against this lineup, BKB really doesn't do much at all. Yeah, absolutely. They they actually have, like, no magical damage. Yeah. They have, like, the Wyvern W and the Master. Uh, oh, five. big curse on a Biver right there. It's going to kill the Crimstork off the bat. Now, Hester Duran's also caught. And the Beastmaster, he turns around with a Primal Roar, but that's just going to delay the inevitable. It feels like runes applied. And double kill for DNZ. So they get a couple of kills out of this. They're getting the tower kill as well. And they continue to brawl. I mean, this is still a, a very open game. It's been a slight lead for Team Spirit, but, you know, one quick fight like that and starting to swing back for EPG. Yeah, the team fight from EPG is scary. It's scary as hell. They're like, they have to fight because they can't, like, none of their heroes are independent. Like, none of their cores. Their cores are Troll, Monkey King, Dazzle. Like, all those heroes are susceptible to being picked off. So their only option is to is to fight. And it's one of those things you kind of forget sometimes in the draft when you look at it. But their, their team fight's really scary with the Wyvern Brewmaster support duo. That's, like, you see the curse with the Brewmaster follow-up. And... Nice thing about the Brew is he has the AoE purge for the for the Sven Warcry, so the power of that Sven in the mid game is pretty much negated because um, it removes the Warcry shield. That's essentially, you know, a heavy nuke. You can look at it from that perspective. Yeah, it's a 440 physical damage nuke. Yeah, yeah like you <laughs> said, and it also removes all the move speed, which is a big deal too. Radiant nice counterplay Australia. against that. Echo Saber finished on Monkey King. We see the SNY also purchased by Morphling. Uh, does have the Eye of Scotty queued up next. But similar to we saw Morphling in the first series. Pretty same idea here. Just these stat-based items so good on the hero. Absolutely. Surprising. I'm realizing the Huskar's probably going four staff because of the Monkey King as well. You just need to get away from their initial jump on elements. Because elements, like once they commit with their Wyvern ulti, Monkey King ulti, and Brewmaster split, I think the only option Team Spirit has this game is to disengage. So I think, you know, Morphling already has the innate disengage, and I think they're going to look to build more items that help them uh, survive the initial onslaught from, from elements here. Take a look at the I'd odds. take those odds. Yeah. I'd take those odds, honestly. I, you know, I'm not going to influence people, but I, I think <laughs> elements, you know, they, their team fight looked really good right now. So yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I think this is a very even game, is what I'm trying to say. I agree with you there. You I, head over to ES.bet, guys. You can play some odds or play some bets yourself if you like. Don't blame me. That's the disclosure. No. <laughs> you know, I, I I take no I take no uh, I take no liability here. Nice. Both teams kind of playing their own group up as five. Look to control the part of the map that has their objectives. Radiant wants to take top tier two. Dire wants to take mid tier two. BKB in the works for that troll. On the other side, of course, the Radiant team. Uh, BKB definitely a decent value. So no surprise to see that. As there's the four staff purchase from nine. So that full Hurricane Pike is going to be coming along. Yeah. Troll just needs to enable his team to use their abilities. Like, he, even though he, they have a lot of control for him through his BKB, they, he needs to just run in and make it so Team Spirit has to commit to him, and then the rest of Elements can use their abilities much more effectively because of that. And that's, like, an important aspect that a lot of, I feel like, players don't, like, viewers that are watching don't understand, is that even though the Troll BKB doesn't actually help him that much against heroes like Beastmaster and Grimstroke, he just needs to be able to run in and force them to use those abilities on him without him just dying. So, very oh important that he builds that BKB. Oh, we got a chase up here, Nines. Oh my Coming in as well as Morphling. Trying to catch up to somebody. Almost got up to the Brewmaster, but just out of range it looks like. But him and Troll are still definitely possibly going to be caught. In fact, LeBron's at a point like he might as well sacrifice. Yeah, he's going to pop the Primal Split. I don't think they're setting up a turn, though. Yeah, he's just trying to get the hell on out of here with that Earth Panda, which he's doing for now. Although he goes back in with this. I'm not really sure. They seem very not sure what to do, frankly, as there's the double Primal Roar with the Soul by Monkey King coming in, but Swift Ending, he is dropping back here. Might have to pop the ultimate soon, just simply to stay alive. It's Willing Axis. There's the ultimate. He goes on to Nine. Nine's in trouble. Nine Hurricane Pike away. Trying to get out of the Wukong's command. Cannot do so. Down goes Huskar. And it actually looks pretty good now for Elements Pro Gaming. Skitter being run down, slowing down with the Primal Spring of Bornesia. Swift ending, getting close enough as well. See the bad juju kicking in, and that's going to be a dead Morphling. Double kill for the troll. Well, that fight definitely turns. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if they're able to cast their abilities, I feel like Elements just win. 
So they look to commit onto this brew. They were kind of hesitant with their abilities. He gets a split off. They spend a lot of time hitting the broodlings, and like that's just a lot of damage being soaked up allows for the rest of elements to get into the fight and get positioned and huskar can't fight in his monkey king ultimate and huskar is a hero that relies on just manning up and standing his ground and you can't do that against this monkey king troll and this is what i meant by the snowballing effect of both here both teams here they, they're just gonna take a rax off of a fight there you go the melee going down nine he jumps in though wants immediate revenge he's gonna hurricane pike forward wants to kill monkey king nice job with the gold embrace but the burning spear is adding up you got to think Monkey King's still in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's going to burn to death. Dazzle could not save him in time. They get the kill on to Brewmaster as well. RMN's going to fall to a Winter's Curse, however. Ouch. Yeah, got one turn kill at least, but it's going to be cost of Winter Wyvern, so I think Sven has a, the last lap there. And Roche is up, which is a huge deal. I would like to see Team Spirit check that out and see if it is, because I don't think it's 100% up yet uh, from their perspective. It looks like Grim is going to walk in. That's super important if they, they get something off these kills. It's not enough that they get the kills. The map control and the momentum is still like, even though they're down a racks, both teams are just able to win one fight and pretty much like get one or two lanes of racks every single time they win a fight. So by no means is this game over still. No. <laughs> no this, Despite this... them having like a Huskar lineup and losing a racks. Yeah, this is one of those games that you never really can feel comfortable calling it. Yeah. <laughs> This is a game where even if you got Megat, even if you can't really defend Megas, both teams like win one fight and they'll just end the game instantly. So. Oh, here we go. They just got Roshan, but they need to run all oh, big stuff with it. Uh, balanced strike there of Monkey King. They kill two off the bat. Brewmaster, excuse me, Beastmaster as well as the Grimstroke. Skitter, he's uh, he morphing into Troll. He's dead oh. too. So yeah, all three do have buybacks, but that's not what you uh. wanted for Spirit. Yeah, not with, not with Morphling going down. I just meant like, I think they need to win this fight, but... Uh, Morphling got caught without even oh, using his morph. He had cheese and morph available there and didn't get either of them morph. off because of the troll basher. And that's... I I'm feeling real rough for Team Spirit right now. They're only down 1k, but I was hoping for the momentum coming off that those kills at the base, and EPG shut that down immediately. I think a big thing for them, too, I mean, I guess... I was going to say that they have some decently timed ultimate cooldowns as far as a little bit longer. But the big one, you know, Troll War is obviously very short um, with his. And so he's able to, you know, continue to look to pick fights uh, pretty aggressively when it comes to it. So that with the Wukong's command especially as well. Um, coming into play here as far as that reset factor goes for EPG. Yeah, it's, if both teams cast their spells, Radiant's going to win the fights. And uh, so as long as they wait for their cooldowns as you've already mentioned like all they are they've had they have everything but the brewmaster split right now uh, like i feel like wyvern curse is so powerful this game uh into the wukong command that's one thing i didn't factor in when i did the monkey king pick but now another fight breaking out mana battle between the two hard right clickers now jumping troll though man he pops his ultimate now it is gonna wear off though but the wukong's command goes down as well all right man's definitely melting away nine he's still meeting up however cold embrace saving swift ending for the time being hurricane pike away that's so many stacks of the burning spears but he goes down and the aegis's pop buyback from sven and suddenly everyone's back up a reset for epg they'll be glad that they all survived and get the hell on out yeah they didn't they didn't have bruce for that so that's a win for sure they got rid of the aegis i feel like that was kind of team spirit's win condition there was to have that aegis and be able to take a long enough fight to win uh i, I actually this is a game where if Team Spirit wins, I'm going to learn something because I don't I don't see how they come back. I feel like EBG just has to stick as five uh, for the rest of the game, and there's really nothing Team Spirit can do about it. Like none of their heroes split push fast enough in order to like force EPG to have to separate. Yeah. And since especially since they got that one lane of racks, one lane will always be pushed in, and they have all their ultimates, so they're ready to go except for the Wyvern Curse. But I think they're okay without that. Sven, he's going to be the target choice. He's going to go down first. And the rest of Team Spirit, though, is just simply running away. Although, Brewmaster's hunting, but no, it's not going to be able to find anybody. As, yeah, there's the BKB also delivered to Monkey King, by the way. So, oh, they just smoked right on top of a hawk there. Uh, plenty of information. I think for they're Team fine Spirit. with this. Team, the troll will just hit the tower. I, like, yeah, they're not going to die to this because they saw it, like you said, but troll just hits the tower anyways, and Team, and team Spirit's forced to run away because they don't know where these setup heroes are on the map because they're smoked. And they're not going to be able to get a trade off this. It looks like they're, like, trying to walk down mid and get a trade, but troll, uh, there's no trading with troll. Like, if troll's hitting your buildings, he's the fastest damage 
like tower damaging consistently hero in the game, I think. You were uh, you were just stressing this, and sure enough, the spirit's like, we're gonna try, but it's not gonna work, guys. There's your tier three. Oh, you see your melee racks? Yeah, it, it's dead, by the way. Uh, fortification is gonna be popped, so they are racing somewhat, but as soon as that fortification wears off, you gotta figure it's dying. In fact, that's a rotten. He's got kind of a little bit too far up. Double Prime War will stall things, if anything. So they are gonna kill the melee racks themselves on the dire side, but now the radiant uh, side will also get the one over here. You see down there, the Primal Split's trying to st stop some TPs, it looks like. Trying to cast off these two small screens here. Huskar is picked off in the end, so that Winter's Curse held him in place to eventually take him out. So, I mean, they got the melee racks. They kind of did trade there in a sense, but they do lose Huskar as well. I don't yeah. know. That seems like considering that's actually not bad for Spirit. <laughs> I agree. I agree with that statement. Uh, they're making the best out of a bad situation here. Yeah. Sure. But we're not done just yet. As Wukong's command catches Biver, he just melts away inside of that. Skitter, he's going to go and figure the Dazzle kill. Swift ending, though. That's his ultimate, not using it just yet. Just running after Skitter for the time being. With the BKB wearing off, though. Is he still going to be comfortable going back in? Just thinking about it. At least uh, Monkey King kind of toying with them, but they are going to eventually just retreat here. They almost cut those trees with the axes in time. If he'd gotten caught by that, it would have been four seconds of stun, potentially going down. So a lot closer than it looked. But either way, uh, I think both teams were pretty happy with what just happened there, meaning best case scenario for Team Spirit. But Elements isn't exactly upset about the occurrences of that trade. Yeah. I feel like one more fight will spell the end of this game. Uh, either way, uh, uh, you know, unless they just mass buyback. Uh, this Monkey King, despite his fra fragility in the mid game, nice. I think like you were seeing his uh, power in this late game. Like it, it's, and you just sometimes forget these team fight combos. The Wyvern Maybe Monkey King, one of the most strive. potent Something combos in the entire game, because Wyvern is such a long setup for the Monkey King. Monkey King being able to get like a reliable ulti off is always difficult, but the Wyvern ulti and the ulti stun from Monkey King is just so so potent. Well, they're baiting the Sven right here, but he's just going to melt away, so not so much of a bait. Yeah, baiting is a, that, that's a generous word you <laughs> use there, sir. That was the intention, at least. Unfortunately, the bait was eaten and didn't really do much about it. Free food for the Tier 3 tower instead, and the rack's going to be exposed after the fact. You see Skitter hopping around as he's morphed into the Monkey King. That's all he can really do with that, though. As he's trying to battle, keep them off, but Trolls is just going to focus on the rain tracks, get the easy one killed. At least first, and back up for now, there's the Soulbind on both the Brewmaster as well as Troll. The follow-up, though, not necessarily the greatest. Primal Roar still on cooldown, or off cooldown. He wasn't able to use it there. There we go, he will use it here now. They catch the Troll, but he's so far out there. He's running away, but now he's going to pop his ultimate for sure. Oh, no, the Hurricane Park push it. There's the ultimate. He runs back in on a 9. He's going for the Bash Rocks. There's the uh, stun onto him, though, but 9 does fall. The Wukonsi man even coming out. Yeah, that seemed like an ambitious decision right there. This troll is going to end up dying. He is out for 70 seconds, actually, with no buyback. Skitter was really deep, by the way. Turns into Wyvern and throws out a Splinter Blast. So maybe it is working out decent for Spirit, actually, in the long run. Our man, Pursuit. Inkswell connects. He's definitely dead, though. On Sven. As you see Skidder trying to keep his distance in that Wyvern Arctic burn, but did he get too close? Buyback on nine. Maybe not. Nine's coming back in on Huskar. He's ready to make some more plays. Control staying dead, although he does have a buyback now, but obviously they're so far away. Probably accept your losses here if you're EPG. It's going to be one on Brew. And DNZ gets out. Not too bad in the end, but they, they got the objectives. That's what really matters. You see the top lane being pushed in. I think EPG is still very comfortable. Yeah, uh, Huskar forced to buy back a hero that with these type of buybacks affect him way more than other carries or other semi carries. He just falls off. With, he doesn't have any way to like flash farm and make up for the fact that he had to buy back. So uh, it's going to really halt his progression as a hero and he's going to become less and less impactful as the game goes on. And he just dies to Monkey King ult. We saw it last fight, and he can't fight in it. And that's the one benefit of picking Monkey King into Huskar, not just for the lane, but like for the game itself. Is if Huskar is forced to run away, that hero is not very good. <laughs> not something you want to be seeing on that hero. Goes back to again. That's where, even though we you don't necessarily need it, maybe at the same time it is nice to have that backup support, right? You know, the dazzle, the yeah, oracle, absolutely. whatever. Absolutely, yeah. 
it's a hero that he nowadays he's less cheesy in regards to like the mid to late game is the only real cheese part about Huskar in my opinion is like the laning stage like he, he's less reliant on like these I want to say gimmicks because they're always good but uh, like the combinations of heroes are not as important anymore Guardian Greaves well, finished by Dazzle yeah, this this is this is gonna be the slider here. Whoever gets this should just uh, like if Radiant gets this, the game's over. I'm pretty sure. Well, we may find out soon. We're only Axis popped, and obviously they want to stop it as much as they can. But Trolls is still sitting inside there. Primal Split's already been activated by Brewery. Lifts up Huskar. It's down here. There they. That's Skitter. Skitter's caught. Morphling. Oh, he eats the cheese. He's gonna be fine for the time being. He's morphed into that Monkey King. And look at Huskar's being Croc control this whole time too. The Primal Split. He lifts him up. So he's out for another six seconds. Winter Curse on a Hesito Ron. So no kills out of this, but they're locking down like crazy. Skitter gets away, but the Wukong's coming out nine. He has Hurricane Pike out. Buyback from the Beastmasters, making its way back in nine. Did he go too deep? It looks like it. Swift Inning jumps in, pops the ultimate, going tunnel vision for him. The Prama Roar is not going to save it. the Huskar when it's all said and done. Despite coming out, Skinner's also low once again. He morphs back into his main form, so he will survive for now. But Arm Man, that's a double kill for Troll. This Troll is just unstoppable at this rate. That should all but do it. And there's three dead with no buybacks, and EPG just going to push. Yeah, this Huskar is not a hero. This the Spirit Vessel, uh, really, you know, driving the nail in the coffin there. Just the fact that he has a hard enough time fighting into all the abilities that Elements has. You saw that you mentioned that they were just crowd controlling him the entire time, and then once he uses his ultimate, his ultimate's the only way he has to remove the Spirit Vessel. So he ults, and then he gets Spirit Vessel, and that hero's pretty much useless alongside the Morphling. So that Spirit Vessel purchased from the Wyvern, massively important there. Really good choice. Uh, I, when I looked at the draft, I thought Dyer would be able to snowball that early momentum, but mm -hmm. definitely underestimating just the team fight of, of the Radiant lineup. Yeah, first time kind of cast a troll game, actually, post 7.2. I'm definitely fairly impressed as far as uh, the impact it's able to have. That ultimate is uh, is an interesting one. Again, going the basher now on the hero. Makes sense in the long run, and uh, one that can get dominant if he gets that snowball of a start. So good draft overall. Yeah, Troll Dazzle is quite a combo just because you basically have two shallow graves. We saw a top where they were True. in a in a rough spot and we thought he was gonna go down and then I forgot about the grave. He gets he uses his ult so he's alive for six and a half seconds and then he gets grave for another five and you just can't kill him. So uh it's just a hero that in the past struggled with just getting controlled and bursted, and now it's like you don't really want to commit to killing troll because he does that. Like that's something old troll could never do. And that's that adds a lot of of power to a carry hero, giving them some innate ability to live. It sounds so simple, but that, that that's a, it goes a long way on these types of heroes. And that one, like the fact that he lived through that one fight, uh, easily like swayed the momentum of this game. All right, guys, stay tuned because we got game number two going to be coming up right now. It's a one nothing lead for EPG. Can they close out the series, or will Team Spirit force what would be a third and final game? And it's our final series of the day, at least here for the first round of the playoffs. The We Play Winter Madness continues on Breaky CPK. Joined by BSJ, we'll be joined back by Gods as well after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be back. <laughs> 